The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, I'm Sean Esterly with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and welcome to today's webinar which is being hosted by the Clean Energy Solution Center in partnership with Mission Innovation. And today's webinar is focused on the accelerating clean energy innovation in Sweden. And before we begin, I just want to go over some of the webinar features. You do have two options for audio. You may either listen through your computer or over your telephone. If you choose to listen through your computer, please select the mic and speakers option in the audio pane. Doing so will eliminate the possibility of feedback and echo. And if you choose to dial in by phone, please select the telephone option and a box on the right side will display the telephone number and audio pin that you should use to dial in. If anyone's having technical difficulties with the webinar, you may contact the GoToWebinars help desk at 888-259-3826. And we do encourage anyone from the audience to ask questions of our panelists at any point during the webinar. To ask a question, simply type it into the questions pane and submit it there. Uh, and we will save those questions for the Q&A at the end of the presentations. And if you, have, if you are having difficulty viewing the materials through the webinar portal, you will find PDF copies of the presentations at cleanenergysolutions.org forward slash training. And you may follow along as our speakers present. Additionally, an audio recording of the presentations will be posted to the Clean Energy Solutions Center training page within a few days of the broadcast and will be added to the Solution Center YouTube channel where you will find other informative webinars as well as video interviews with thought leaders on clean energy policy topics. One important note of mention before we begin our presentations is that the Clean Energy Solution Center does not endorse or recommend specific products or services. Information provided in this webinar is featured in the Solution Center's resource library as one of many best practices, resources reviewed and selected by technical experts. Today's webinar agenda is centered around the presentations from our guest panelists, Robert Andren, Lars Goldbrun, Remy Kolsar, and Andreas Stubelius, who have joined us to discuss Sweden's approach to accelerating clean energy innovation. Before we jump into the presentations, I'll provide a quick overview of the Clean Energy Solution Center. And then following the presentations, we will have a question and answer session where the panelists will address questions submitted by the audience. And at the end of the webinar, uh, you will be automatically prompted to fill out a brief survey as well. So we do thank you in advance for just taking a moment to respond to that. The Solution Center was launched in 2011 under the Clean Energy Ministerial. The Clean Energy Ministerial is a high-level global forum to promote policies and programs that advance clean energy technology, to share lessons learned and best practices, and to encourage the transition to a global clean energy economy. 24 countries and the European Commission are members, covering 90% of clean energy investment and 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The Solution Center is one of the nine initiatives of the Clean Energy Ministerial. Other SEM initiatives include ISCAN, 21CP, P, and Global LEAP. And all of the initiatives works towards the three overarching goals of improving energy efficiency worldwide, enhancing clean energy supply, and expanding clean energy access. Now a little overview of the Clean Energy Solution Center. This webinar is being provided by the Solution Center, which focuses on helping government policymakers design and adopt policies and programs that support the deployment of clean energy technologies. This is accomplished through support in crafting and implementing policies relating to energy access, no-cost expert policy assistance, and peer-to-peer -peer learning and training tools such as this webinar. The Clean Energy Solutions Center is co-sponsored by the governments of Australia, Sweden, and the United States with in-kind support from the government of Mexico. And there's five primary goals for the Solution Center. Uh, first goal is to serve as a clearinghouse of clean energy policy resources. Second is to share policy best practices, data, and analysis tools specific to clean energy policies and programs. Third is to deliver dynamic services that enable expert assistance, learning, and peer-to-peer -peer sharing of experiences. And fourth goal is to foster dialogue on emerging policy issues and innovation around the globe. And finally, the Solution Center serves as a primary resource for project financing options and information to expand markets for clean energy. And this finance technical assistance service of the Solution Center was announced last year at COP21. 
Our primary audience is made up of energy policymakers and analysts from governments and technical organizations in all countries. We also strive to engage with the private sector, NGOs, and civil society as well. Solution Center is an international initiative that works with more than 35 international partners across its suite of different programs. And several of the partners are listed above and include research or organizations like IRENA and the IEA, programs like SE for All, and regionally focused entities such as the ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. And then finally, one of the marquee features that the Solution Center provides is its no-cost expert policy assistance known as Ask an Expert. The Ask an Expert service matches policymakers with one of the more than 50 global experts selected as authoritative leaders on specific clean energy finance and policy topics. For example, in the area of renewable electricity policy, we are very pleased to have Paul Kamar from the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Institute serving as one of our experts. So if you have a need for policy assistance in a renewable electricity policy or any other clean energy sector, we do encourage you to use this valuable service. And again, it's provided to you free of charge. So if you have a question for our experts, please submit it through a simple online form at cleanenergysolutions.org forward slash expert. We also invite you and encourage you to spread the word about this service to those in your own networks and organizations. And so now I'd like to provide brief introductions for today's panelists. First up today is Robert Andron who has served in the government for 15 years in several different ministries and is currently the Director General for Energy at the Ministry of the Environment and Energy. Following Robert, we will hear from Lars Goldbrun, who has been working with the Administration in Funding of Energy Research and Innovation since 1989 and is currently a Senior Advisor in the Ministry of the Environment and Energy. And after Lars, we will hear from Remy Kolasar, who is the Director of the Department for Research and Innovation at the Swedish Energy Agency. He has a background in the microelectronic industry and has more than 20 years experience in the energy sector, serving various positions within academia and government agencies. And our final speaker today will be Andreas Stubilius, who has, brings 15 years experience within the energy field to the Swedish Energy Agency where he's a senior project manager in the Department of Market Development. And so with those introductions, I'd like to welcome Robert to the webinar. Thank you, Sean. And good morning, good day, or good afternoon to all of you, um, depending on where you are in the world at the moment. Um, I will give you a short introduction to the overall uh, policy objectives that we have on energy and climate in Sweden. Um, and uh, then my colleagues will take you deeper into our energy system and our energy related R&D and innovation system. And Robert, we can hear you just fine, but we can't yet see your uh, slides. I'm working on it. Now, here it is. Like this? Okay. You'll need to select the show your, uh, click on the show your slide prompt. Is this working? Mm. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. We'll go ahead and show them from our end. Okay. Are they up and running? Just give us just one moment. Stephanie, can you show the slides for them, please? Yes, it is working now. It's working now. Okay, I do apologize for the technical inconvenience here. Um, just let me start by uh, giving you some words about Sweden as a country because it perhaps facilitates your understanding of our system and our solutions that we have chosen when it comes to energy and climate. Um, 
uh, as you can see, Sw Sweden is a, a, a fairly large country actually, uh, but with uh, not so many people living in it. We are the third third largest country in in the European Union, but we're the number 13 when it comes to people. We uh, actually turned 10 million inhabitants just the other day. Uh, but we are, uh, as you can see, our population density is very low, particularly in the northern parts of Sweden. Our GDP per capita is high and Sweden is ranked number seven in the world according to the GDP per capita indicator. Uh, we are a very rich, uh, forest rich country. Uh, so we have a large biomass resources and more than half the country is covered by forests. And the annual growth of forest biomass succeeds by far the annual harvest, and that is quite important in our system. Uh, it's also good to know that Sweden is and has for a very long time been a strong advocate for free trade due to our dependency on import and export for the economy. Um, and important in industrial sectors in Sweden uh, are engineering, automotive industry, IT and pharmaceuticals. But we still depend uh, somewhat on, on traditional uh, uh, areas such as pulp and paper, iron and steel, wood products and chemicals. Now, uh, the overall objectives uh, that govern us. Uh, now, the prime priority of the present government, as I guess is for most governments around the world, is to create jobs. Uh, and uh, one of the crucial ingredients to achieve this priority of creating jobs is the transition of our economy towards a more bio-based and circular economy, where both energy and climate are seen as core fundaments in this transition. Uh, in June this year, a broad framework agreement was agreed between the government parties and uh, most of the oppositional parties in the parliament, and this is a very important framework, and I will come back to it uh, in just a few minutes. And it, it, it states that Sweden uh, must have a robust electricity network with high security of supply uh, and low environmental impact, including climate change, and offer electricity at competitive prices. Now, um, these are seen as, as uh, safeguards for sustainable, efficient, robust and healthy and cost-effective energy system which in, in, in turn is a prerequisite for economic development, employment, our industry, trade, and also research and, and uh, innovation. And as you can see, we are stressing security of supply, uh, low and negative environmental impact, both locally and globally, and also on the deliverance of electricity at the competitive prices. Uh, this policy, uh, uh, we think, is in very good agreement with the vision of the Mission Innovation to dramatically accelerate global clean energy innovation. And the objective is also underlining the need for long-term perspectives and clarity for the market and the market actors to generate new jobs and investments in Sweden, as well as export possibilities for Swedish, Swedish enterprises and solutions. And again, uh, a robust and innovative energy system is also a core fundament for achieving the overall policy objective on climate, which is that Sweden will be one of the world's first fossil fuel uh, free uh, uh, welfare nations. Now, uh, uh, in the shorter term, Sweden has then concretized this in, in quantitative goals corresponding to, uh, first of all, the EU 2020 goals. And as you can see on the slide, there is 50% renewables in the gross final energy consumption. We have 10% renewable energy in the transport sector and a 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Now, in the longer terms, the, the ambitions are higher, of course. And in the framework agreement among, uh, between the government and, and the opposition, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, there has been a uh, agreement uh, such as 100% renewable electricity by 2040 and 50% more energy, efficient energy use by 2030. 
and also uh, again in another uh, parliamentary committee it was agreed uh, among the parties that we should have a net zero emissions to the atmosphere by 2045. This was again endorsed in the framework agreement on energy. Now steps that has been taken in Sweden, uh, if you look back uh, a while, has been that we have a carbon dioxide tax was introduced in 1991. Uh, we also had an electricity certificate system that was introduced 2003. Then in 2012 uh, this became a joint system with uh, Norway, so we have a Swedish-Norwegian uh, common system today. And uh, we have also uh, had uh, investment support schemes for renewables, for instance solar PVs, uh, and we also have initiated a climate investment program, the Climate Leap, which is of course facilitating and uh, strengthening our uh, way towards uh, achieving the goals and also the objectives. Additional steps taken has been to uh, uh, the initiative Fossil Free Sweden, which is uh, uh, launched in a cooperation between the government and uh, the private sector. Uh, and it has been both small, medium uh, sized and large enterprises getting into this initiative in order to share experiences, um, put the spotlight on good examples, promote cooperation and also to uh, uh, see some concrete actions taken by others, uh, actors outside the government. Uh, we have also a special initiative on fossil free vehicle fleets uh, because as we, our main challenge when it comes to fossil fuels is within the transport sector. So our intensified focus is on reducing emissions from transportation. Uh, and we have uh, also then uh, introduced a number of new policies and public inquiries uh, to, to reach that. And we have a, a, a bill, a new bill planned to put forward to the Swedish Parliament uh, in order to um, uh, make e take even further steps towards the, uh, reaching the goals and objectives. And I think I will stop there with this short uh, uh, introduction to our uh, overall objectives and our interim goals set by our um, political system. And I will now let my colleague Lars take you deeper into our system. Thank you for listening everyone. Yes, uh, thank you. I will continue, Lars Guldbrand. Uh, with a few words on the Swedish energy system and on the funding system for, for uh, clean uh, energy research and innovation. Uh, so, I'll go a bit quickly over some of the pictures, but they are there. You can look at them afterwards if you want. This is just a generic picture of, of an energy system, and I just wanted to point out the real importance for Sweden, uh, our domestic uh, supply of hydropower and biofuels. Nuclear import, uh, energy is also important, but we uh, import the fuel. Uh, we have no domestic production of fossil fuels and no real deposits of coal oil or natural gas. The use of imported fuel is actually quite low, except for oil and the transport sector. There are two other things about the Swedish system that might uh, be of interest to point out and one is that the electricity system was deregulated quite early and that we ha are part of a well-established Nordic market, electricity market. Uh, there are quite a lot of international connections and there is uh, work being done to further uh, connect us to our neighbors. The other thing that might be worth mentioning is that district heating is quite important. Sweden has a fairly cold, cold climate and, and heating is a big consumption of, of energy, but we have a lot of 
fairly efficient district heating and are getting more and more district cooling also. And actually in 2013 district heating delivered 58% of the total heating energy use in housing and premises in Sweden. So that's quite a big share. Um, this picture just shows you that things have been happening since the oil crisis in the 70s. We see to the left of, of the scheme we have uh, a very oil dependent uh, supply system. The orange uh, petroleum uh, wedge is uh, the majority of, of the supply and this has decreased a lot over the years. Instead, we have had an increase in the green wedge, which is biofuels, and in the yellow one, which is nuclear uh, power. Uh, it looks like uh, energy consumption has gone up, but uh, we must uh, note that uh, nuclear power is given as the input of nuclear fuel and not the use of the electricity. In fact, a lot of the uh, energy in, in the nuclear fuel is lost as heat in, in the uh, power station. And this is the situation, just 2013, the latest year we have full statistics for. The upper bar is the supply big shares of uh, biofuels, uh, crude oil and nuclear fuel. And uh, the lower one is uh, consumption and you can see to the right that the heat losses in nuclear power are fairly big. They are almost as big as the entire electricity consumption. And uh, also in the consumption we have biofuels, petroleum products for transport, heat and electricity. So what do we use this for? Well, uh, the big three uh, sectors of use is in industry, transport, and the buildings and service sector. And here we also see in the pie chart to the right that uh, in the industry sector we have quite a lot of very energy intensive uh, industry. Uh, pulp and paper is almost half of, of the consumption, steel and metals, chemicals and mechanical engineering, they are big users of energy and they are also big contributors to our economy, so they are important for us. Uh, this is a picture of the consumption. The black line at the top is the uh, total consumption at um, except for a blip, blip in the middle here, it's, uh, it's, it's decreasing slightly. The colored bits are renewable uh, consumption and as you can see biofuels and hydropower is a big part. Uh, wind is increasing, heat pumps, uh, the renewable part of the energy delivered by heat pumps uh, are increasing and solar is actually increasing but you can't see it in, in this picture. It contributes less than a tenth of a percent of the electricity use in Sweden. Just to brag a little, this is the total renewable energy consumption uh, in relation to the 50 percent goal for 2020 and as you can see we have already reached that a few years ago. Uh, to the right we see the emissions of greenhouse gases uh, per G gross national product and per capita and you can see they are going in the right direction but to reach a net zero emission in 2045 there is really a lot more to do so that is quite an ambitious goal. So this was a short introduction to the energy system and I will continue with a few words on uh, the funding of energy research and innovation before we get to the interesting bits that the Swedish Energy Agency will provide you with. Just to start, this is in general uh, research and innovation in total. Uh, we have 3.3 percent of the gross domestic uh, production is research and innovation. It's uh, quite a big part. Uh, 
almost two thirds is from the private sector, and some funding also comes from from the abroad, like the European Union. Uh, when it comes to who carries out the research, uh, the private sector is even more dominant. Uh, of course, uh, universities uh, provide quite a lot of research and innovation also. What we can note is that the institute sector is very small in Sweden. And this is because uh, the Swedish universities are expected to uh, provide three different tasks. It's uh, education, it's research, and it is collaboration with society and industry. So universities are expected to fill, fulfill part of the role that in other countries might perhaps be performed by institutes. And this provides universities with quite a lot of contacts with the users and, and industry and society and is in general uh, a good thing that uh, adds to the quality of the research being made. Now here is a picture which will be incorrect fairly soon as ministers come and go, but at the moment it is the main ministers and ministers uh, responsible for research and innovation that might be of interest for energy. Uh, the Ministry of Education and Research, they provide money directly to universities and also for uh, basic science through the Swedish Research Council. Then we have a Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation, which uh, provides funding for research and innovation through the Swedish innovation agency called the Vinova. The Ministry of the Environment and the Energy uh, also have uh, agencies that provide funding. It is on the one hand the Swedish Research Council of Sustainable Development. They fund research on the environment, on the uh, forestry and, and uh, farming and, and on the city planning and stuff like that. But then to the right we have the Minister for Energy, uh, Mr. Ibrahim Bailan and the Swedish Energy Agency that is the main actor in the field of energy research and innovation. This is a fairly naive picture of, of what the different funding agencies do and they are put on the screen in relation to the uh, type of process in the innovation process that they generally fund. And we see the Research Council uh, at the basic research arrow, the Swedish uh, Research Council on Sustainable Development is uh, more strategic and more targeted on, on, on uh, environment and uh, such. And then we have the Vinova, that funds research, development, demonstration and innovation. And uh, to the right we also have some public companies that provide venture capital and the like. At the bottom we see the Swedish Energy Agency, which has a large role over the entire uh, innovation system, providing uh, funding for everything from strategic basic research, research development, demonstration, and also business development, startups, and, and so on. And they do this uh, entirely from the energy relevance perspective. The other agencies, they have also some energy relevant uh, activities and they have, may have uh, activities that are of interest for the mission innovation, but the main actor is actually the Swedish Energy Agency. Uh, this is just an alternative picture showing the flows of funding directly to the universities, the public, about half of, of the public funding goes directly to you, the universities. Then we have the research funding agencies and the expert agencies and the uh, venture capital companies. And as you can see, the big, the largest green arrow is from the Swedish Energy Agency and then it all collects in a nice pool of energy research development, demonstration, product development and innovation. Uh, and uh, that is uh, in 
some extent coordinated strategically between the different funding providers. And to finish up, I just wanted to tell you that the Energy Agency has a rather large responsibility. The government and parliament, uh, we, they uh, state the goals of the energy policy as a whole climate policy, they uh, decide the appropriations, they give the instructions. But uh, government and parliament does not do the, the uh, choice of the different programs or, or uh, areas where, where to invest. That is entirely the uh, responsibility of the energy agency. Uh, the energy agency is to deliver the research and innovation results that will contribute to us reaching the energy and climate goals and they will do this from uh, a priori, from ab initio or whatever you say, from the uh, overarching visions, goals and objectives. They will do a strategic planning, a portfolio definition and acquisition and so on and they will implement it and follow it up, review, evaluation, feedback and so on. So much of the responsibility of, of carrying out the tasks needed to uh, get clean energy innovation in Sweden is the realm of the energy agency. And uh, I happen to lie, I think, because there's one picture left. And this is just uh, some more bragging. Uh, we are very proud to have been ranked the second most innovative country in the world, according to the Global Innovation Index. Uh, Switzerland has the top numbers, three and four are the UK and the US, respectively. And uh, the European Union also does a ranking, the Innovation Scoreboard, and uh, last year we were actually number one, followed by Denmark, Finland, Germany, and the Netherlands. And I lied again because there is another picture, and this is just to look at later uh, how to get to the web page of the uh, Swedish government in English and how to email me and Robert. And with that, I will not take up any more time. I will uh, hand the microphone over to Remy Kolisar, who will tell you about the Swedish energy. Thank you very much, Lars, and um, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I will um, give you um, a, a deeper insight in the uh, uh, activities at the Swedish Energy regarding um, energy research and innovation funding. Uh, and later on, my, my colleague um, Andreas Tubelius will go more into details in the uh, business development uh, activities we have at the Swedish Energy Agency. Uh, just to start, um, overall, uh, a few facts and figures about uh, our activities. Um, as uh, Lars um, said in his uh, introduction, uh, we are supporting and we have tools to support across the whole innovation chain. So from basic research to large-scale demonstration, commercialization and market uptake uh, within the uh, energy sector. Um, uh, we have a budget uh, today of roughly 150 million euro. Uh, that's uh, today's fig fig figures. Uh, and what is important is that this <coughs> the amount of money we put in in, um, in research and in, in, in development is actually uh, doubled by uh, private sector co-funding. Um, and uh, annually we're running around around 50 R&D programs and more than 3,000 projects uh, continuously, continuously running uh, at the agency. Um, another thing is we uh, do have um, not only funding but also um, responsibility for uh, priority settings and, and, and strategy for public RD&D fundings in, in Sweden. Uh, and this uh, strategy is uh, actually articulated uh, around five grand challenges uh, we've uh, identified for uh, a sustainable energy future. Uh, the cornerstone is, of course, a hundred 
100% renewable energy system, uh, but a, a, a f uh, renew, um, sustainable future is not only uh, 100, uh, re uh, renewable energy systems. The system has to be also flexible and, and robust, resilient, uh, and also take into account resource efficiency, uh, both for society um, and, and for um, also from a sustainable point of view. Um, also, we uh, do not only have uh, uh, transitions that need to be done in the, from a technology point of view or from uh, an infrastructure point of view. Uh, even the, um, uh, the system actually includes uh, um, markets, uh, regulation, uh, development of new business models, uh, behavioral changes and so on. So interaction between the systems and all actors in uh, society uh, is also very important to, to study uh, and develop. And finally, of course, these uh, new challenges and, and means that we have also opportunities and we have to look at the opportunities through uh, innovation, creating, uh, addressing um, uh, challenges for, for climate, uh, but also creating jobs, of course. Uh, our um, research is uh, organized uh, around nine thematic research areas, uh, covering everything from uh, power systems, um, smart grids, renewable energy sources, bioenergy, very important for Sweden, as um, um, was, was said before in the introduction, uh, transport system, uh, industrial processes, we have a lot of, of uh, industry, uh, large uh, energy users in, in Sweden and, and uh, efficiency in energy processes is very important. Uh, building um, as part of the energy system, um, uh, energy system studies more general, sustainable society development, business development and commercialization and uh, more globally, development of international partnership. Uh, when it comes um, to the different tools we are um, using across the uh, innovation chain, um, we are um, dealing with everything from research grants and research program. Uh, industrial co-funding research programs, um, large-scale, small-scale demonstration projects, but also development of prototype proof of concepts uh, for, for large and, and small actors. Um, we also have uh, tools concerning uh, the uh, support for uh, startups and, and SMEs and my colleague Andreas will be talking later on on, on, on these particular uh, kind of tools. Uh, we even have uh, innovation challenges and prize as a tools to um, uh, introduce and, and um, accelerate introduction of new innovations uh, and even uh, diffusion in, in terms of uh, information campaigns, uh, for instance, in uh, energy efficiency. So, uh, tools across the whole innovation chain. Um, just to give you some highlights on, on applications of our, uh, of our activities, uh, on the upper left corner you have the um, um, total uh, R&D spending, net spending for, uh, for energy research and uh, a strong correlation with application of patent applications uh, related to, to energy uh, during the last years. Uh, and looking more specifically in different areas, we see also um, a strong co correlation with areas we've been focusing on, um, especially uh, renewable energy uh, resources, um, uh, efficiency in the transport sector, um, uh, electrical vehicles, um, yeah, and and uh, and the biofuels, for instance. So there's strong correlation with our um, our our activities and and the impact on on patent applications as we can see. 
Um, just to give you also uh, other example of, of uh, what we're doing and, and, and um, result of what we're doing, um, here are example of activities that actually started by support of uh, more early research support uh, and, and lead to uh, business development uh, at some point. Uh, we have in Sweden a couple of, of um, very interesting companies uh, developing um, um, solar cells for the third generation solar cells, um, like it took some of the few uh, examples here with exigers and, and uh, seamless integration of indoor solar cells, uh, solar voltaics with nanowise that increase uh, efficiency of uh, conventional uh, solar cells. Uh, Midsummer with um, high efficiency, flexible, thin, uh, thin film solar cells. So all of these companies were supported at various stage of the uh, of the uh, research and, and um, innovation, and and are a good example of of uh, of the kind of of uh, result we can obtain. Um, we also have um, dedicated. Um, support for uh, solar fuels uh, for more long terms and, and uh, long range um, applications um, with the, the Solar Fuse Institute. Um, ocean energy is also an interesting area we've been supporting um, from basic research, um, early research at university level and uh, resulting in, in a couple of, of uh, Swedish companies um, uh, active in, this, in the area of solar energy. Um, give you also example of other type of uh, of support when it comes to uh, pilots and um, demonstrations uh, at more industrial levels. Um, we have um, a couple of projects with uh, the, the larger uh, important groups in in Sweden uh, when it comes to transportation, the Volvo Group and and Scania. Uh, with the Volvo Group, we have. Uh, Two projects uh, that could be highlighted. One is uh, uh, an electrified and autonomous query, uh, Volvo electric site, Volvo construction equipment. So um, both autonom autonomous uh, um, vehicles and, and um, machinery and, and um, electrified query uh, that aim to reduce dramatically uh, CO2 emission uh, for this sector. Um, have also project with um, electric buses uh, running today in, in Gothenburg. Um, with Kenya we have a, a wireless charging um, EV, EV bus um, uh, running today in, in, in uh, Solitalia, southern of, of Stockholm. Uh, just to give you some example of, of the, the kind of project we're also supporting. Uh, when it comes to biofuels we have um, uh, a uh, large amount of, um, of, of biomass in, in Sweden and, and of course it's a very interesting in, uh, areas to develop and, and uh, so biofuels, uh, just to give you an example, we have uh, uh, testing facilities for lignin based biofuels uh, uh, project be between Renfuel and Nordic Paper we've been supporting, uh, just to, to give you an example. Um, area of smart grids, uh, we have uh, several large project uh, smart grids demonstrators uh, for um, smart, ranging from smart cities at the Stockholm Royal Seaport, uh, Ilya Smart City in, in, in the southern part of Sweden, in Malmö, um, in, involving um, traditional um, um, utilities um, and, and um, um, equipment uh, suppliers uh, in those projects. Uh, and we have also um, another project in the island of Gotland, a uh, more rural area, uh, so uh, um, smart grids for integrations of uh, renewable energy in rural areas. Uh, that is run with, with Vattenfallo. Uh, other type of example we have uh, is uh, innovation challenges uh, and prices. Um, with ran um, uh, a challenge uh, oriented toward intelligent management, uh, energy management, um, locally produced energy, uh, solar roof and, and um, uh, storage and, and energy management uh, as the system and um, currently are now after the, the, the 
result of the challenge uh, running the, the project with the uh, four companies that are listed here. Uh, as you can see, there is even a, a not only Swedish uh, companies, there is also a, um, actors from Greece and the US. Um, and we are planning uh, an, a new challenge uh, related to sustainable mo mobility as a service, uh, which is um, under preparation, actually. Um, so that was all I wanted to tell you for now uh, about our activities and uh, highlight some of the results and, and um, example of, of, our, of our support. And I would like to um, give the floor to um, my colleague, uh, Andreas Stubelius. Um, running from um, San Francisco, actually. Yes. So, can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so good morning from uh, uh, sunny San Francisco, California. Um, I'm going to speak to you about how we work with uh, business development of, of clean tech companies and, and technologies. Um, and my first slide is, is, is more of a like a history. Um, we have this uh, quite famous uh, Swedish guy called Alfred Nobel. Uh, maybe some of you have heard of the Nobel Prize uh, that he's giving out. But he was uh, an, in an inventor, an innovator, and an entrepreneur. Uh, he held more than 355 patents and um, I mean the people of Sweden is more more or less living in in his spirit of innovation and um, when we get that together with, with the, the, our sense of uh, resources and living with the nature I mean we have had the carbon tax on, on carbon dioxide since the 90s so we, we live in the polluter pace principle and if you marry the spirit of innovation together with the carbon efficiency uh, that we live in, we can create some really uh, interesting clean tech solutions, actually. Um, so, uh, a little bit about um, how we started. We started out in 2006, and uh, the question from the government was like, okay, we, we are spending a lot of money in research and development. Uh, can we work a bit further with creating uh, growth, jobs, and, and getting these technologies uh, out on the markets so uh, people actually can use them? And so we structured a team more or less like, like a venture capital team. Uh, and uh, we are currently using uh, the department that uh, Remy uh, is head of as a backbone to do the technical due diligence in all these uh, companies or technologies. Uh, I mean, one of the big issues here is that it, it's really high technically advanced and it's really hard to, to really understand the technologies and, and how you can uh, apply them. So um, I think that is really one, one of the big backbones in, 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 our, in our team. Uh, but we are also, we are governmental agency and uh, we, don't, we don't want to invest with equity because we, we can't really take ownership in all these companies. So um, our lawyers have been quite innovative I would like to say. So we have created a tool which is, is a grant with a limited royalty. I, I won't go into the details but it, it's, it's working really good um, and um, yeah and also uh, one of the big big issues is that I mean Sweden is a really small country and our industry is quite efficient so most of the technologies don't really have their main market in Sweden so we use Sweden, the Swedish market as, as a leverage to get these companies uh, test their technology and then get out on the main markets um, so um, that's that's one of the reasons I am in San Francisco today. I have brought uh, seven of the companies in our portfolio to meet with the uh, investors, and uh, I can say we created quite a buzz yesterday. Uh, my companies were in 
in at least 35 uh, investor meetings and uh, the, the, the buzz was around uh, Swedish clean tech and how, how we can really really apply more technologies. Um, when it comes to, to what we do then, we have uh, identified uh, two valleys of death. I should say two financial valleys of death. I, I'd say there are at least 100 more valleys of death when you're creating a technology company. But the first one is when you're, you're about to test your technology. You, 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 you need to test your technology in the first commercial scale. Uh, that, there is a lack of capital, so we have a tool for that. Uh, uh, and the other value of death is when you when you need to scale up. You get your first uh, big order, and you 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 need the, the liquidity in your company to 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 scale up. So that that is the two main uh, targets that we have working with these companies. Um, a little bit about the portfolio. Um, we have okay. Now my slides are not okay. There it works. Um, we have financed. 84 companies since 2006, and uh, 71 of them are still alive, which gives us a survival degree of more than 80%. Uh, and I mean, this is early, really early seed stages, so I, I think that is a quite uh, remarkable result so far. Um, note that I call it survival degree. Uh, I won't call it success degree because, I mean, creating companies uh, takes a long time, but so far I think we're doing really good. Um, our team have invested uh, 63 million dollars into these 84 companies, and uh, our six top companies have a market value of more than 400 million dollars so far. So I mean, then the rest rest of the 65 companies are not included in these four million dollars. So in terms of financial, we're also creating quite remarkable values here. But of course, uh, our main mission is not to to make money. It is more to to uh, get the technologies out on the markets where they're they are needed. Uh, we have eight of our companies have went public um, to the public stock markets. Um, we have had three really big m and uh, where one of the companies was actually bought by a, a big American company called Fairchild. And in terms of, of climate effects, uh, we have actually had uh, the worldwide fund, WWF, to make some calculations of, of the innovations in the portfolio. And they have concluded that the innovations in our portfolio have the possibility to uh, save some 750 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalents every year. And I mean, how, how, how much is that? Well, if you put it in, 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 uh, in reference to the total emissions of Sweden, this is 15 times of the total country of Sweden every year. So I definitely say we, we have some positive climate impact from the from these technologies um, and I mean in, in our agency we are around uh, 300 people and it's uh, more than 700 and uh, 470 people working in these portfolio companies um, so uh, Lars spoke earlier about uh, we're getting really high in, in, in innovation ranks so there's also a global clean tech innovation index where Sweden also comes really high, and um, I also want to show you this this map because uh, one of the big big issues for us is to get these technology companies out of Sweden quite early, and based from the needs of the companies in the portfolio, uh, we have identified four different markets, um, and that is uh, Germany, uh, UK. The U.S. and uh, China, so uh, we have uh, four different programs of, of helping the companies to um, go into those markets. And um, well, I mean, the small country of Sweden, we have seen some really 
really amazing companies in the last years. Uh, we we create more unicorns than than uh, than Germany. And uh, for instance, two two really exciting companies is uh, Skype and uh, and Spotify, which um, if 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 I try really hard, I, I can get them to be sort of clean tech companies. I mean, Skype uh, makes uh, possible meetings without travel, and uh, I mean, Spotify can give you music without uh, yeah having any CD records. But I mean, we 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 have a, a landscape. Of technologies in in Sweden, and this is an example is around Stockholm. That is, uh, I mean, it's awesome, and uh, we I think we have some really great possibilities here. So uh, this is my last slide. Uh, this is where you you can download these uh, publications, and, and you can see more of the portfolio companies, and you can also find them on our website. And uh, I. I am in, in San Francisco and I will be here for like two more days and if you want more detailed description about how we do these things or interest in the companies, uh, please email me and we'll book a meeting. So, thank you. Great, thank you uh, very much Andreas and uh, the rest of the presenters. We very much appreciate uh, those presentations and the information that you conveyed there. Uh, we will now move ahead to the question and answer session. I would just like to remind our attendees, uh, if you have any questions for the panelists, please go ahead and submit those at this time using the question pane. Um, we will also keep several links up on the screen throughout the question and answer for quick reference that point to where, the, where to find information about other upcoming and previously held webinars and how to take advantage of the Asking Expert program. Um, so uh, we'll jump right in now to questions from the audience. Uh, first one is how can uh, nonprofit incubators and accelerators work with Sweden to pursue mission innovation initiatives? Yes, Andreas, is uh, is that a question for you? Yeah. Um, well, I mean the. One one of the issues for 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 clean tech companies in Sweden is that we we really we really need to get these companies out of Sweden a bit earlier than the normal innovation system is is uh, is used to. Uh, I mean, normally we we you grow your company strong enough on your home market and then you get out of of, of that market and go into to exports. But I mean. Since the main market here in Sweden is so small, we, we we really need to to get these companies out of Sweden earlier. And I think that accelerators and incubators all around the world can take a really good part in in that work. Uh, so I mean, we we are really interested in in cooperate with with many many incubators. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, move ahead to the next question now. Uh, how do you see the funding flow um, for this type of work changing in the upcoming years? Yes, uh, the funding is increasing in general. Uh, I mean, the different uh, sources and, and the way that research is funded uh, may perhaps not be changed that much but we have a continuous increase in uh, in the uh, funding of energy research and innovation and we also have an increasing interest in uh, the wider aspects of uh, clean energy sustainable development uh, and the uh, interfaces between uh, real energy technologies and other parts of the uh, economic system, the industrial system, the, the way people uh, behave and want their, their needs uh, fulfilled. So in one way we are facing increasing funding and in the other we are uh, looking at broader and 
ecosystem oriented uh, activities and collaborations with uh, other uh, areas, not least uh, social sciences, humanities and economic uh, research. Great, thank you. And I, I can add here, uh, I mean, from from a venture capital point of view and, and from more private capital, I, I definitely can see increase in, in capital and interest for, for clean tech. Um, we're seeing like a second wave of, of uh, venture capital starting up. Uh, the pension funds are uh, gaining a lot of interest in, in uh, putting their money into more environmental friendly technologies and so I we definitely see an increase in, in the public uh, in, in the private money sector for clean tech. Thank you both. Uh, moving on to the next question. It asks, can you speak to whether Sweden has plans to specifically resource any international R&D &D collaboration, for instance, by building upon existing partnerships through, for example, MOUs with international partners? Yes, the second part of this question is uh, really relevant because uh, we have a few uh, collaborations uh, through bilateral or, or more uh, MOUs and uh, we really see this as interesting starting points, nuclei, to build broader and uh, more uh, engage more partners in uh, areas where the mission innovation have, has also, uh, for instance, the seven innovation challenges. And this might be, uh, we have some collaboration with India on smart grids, we have some collaboration with the UK on district heating, we have some uh, collaboration with the, the state of Minnesota on uh, uh, biomass and bioenergy and uh, so on. So uh, these collaborations are very much uh, seen as starting points for, for broader mission innovation collaboration, which is not to say that we wouldn't uh, look around and see if, if there are initiatives from, from other countries in the mission innovation and, and that we can join. Uh, but we have not uh, sort of set aside a, a specific uh, budget for each mission innovation challenge or, or, or something like that, but uh, we really see that there are lots of opportunities out there to build upon. Great, thank you. Um, and next question. Uh, it says, uh, to achieve Sweden's ambitious and laudable 2045 net zero emissions goal, has the government developed sector-specific pathways in support programs for energy-intensive manufacturing, such as steel and chemicals? Yes, there is uh, something uh, called, uh, I don't know how to translate this, uh, uh, collaborative programs, that one of them is for, for in uh, for industry, uh, to develop industry, and uh, we are looking into that uh, with the uh, industry, with the uh, other funding agencies and, and so on. So uh, there are five of these. It's in industry, it's in transport, it is in the bioeconomy, it is the, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, uh, sustainable cities, and then there is a fifth one, La life science is the uh, fifth one. And these are areas of, of priorities where there will be uh, a lot of effort uh, focused. And, and um, there are also some private initiatives on, on from the different uh, pulp and paper and the, the uh, steel and, and, and iron industries to, to try to do this. Uh, Remy, do you have anything to add? Or maybe, the, yeah, maybe we can name also the, um, the uh, upcoming strategy for different sectors for uh, terms of energy efficiency as a result of the uh, 
uh, of the uh, political um, uh, agreement uh, that was introduced before, and so uh, there are some uh, some um, uh, sector strategy for the strategy for different sectors, uh, including uh, uh, electricity intensive um, uh, industry, uh, will be covered by those uh, strategy. Great, thank you, Rem. Um, and the question from our next attendee, uh, they want to thank you for your excellent presentations. And they noted that in the introduction, you mentioned the role of trade and industry in Sweden. Does the country have policies and programs to address emissions leakage? Um, I'm not really sure how to respond to that, but as you saw uh, in the introductory slides, uh, there is a lot of effort focused on competitive prices for, for energy and uh, to uh, provide a system that is robust and, and uh, works uh, and underpins our industry. So, so uh, there is of course uh, policy and politics to make sure that uh, the Swedish industry, energy intensive industry can continue to, to be competitive. Uh, that we uh, combine the, the sustainability and the, the decrease of emissions with the uh, economics so that we don't kill our economy. Um, it's not really my uh, area, this uh, bit of, of, of the energy policy, but it's a very very important uh, concern for us and it was a very important concern for, for the all party energy commission that resulted in, in the goals and, and uh, the, the uh, direction of Swedish energy policy that Robert mentioned in the, in the beginning. So, so uh, emission leakage and, and the, the uh, moving out of industry uh, is in focus, that I can say. Great, thanks again. Uh, the next question uh, that came in uh, notes that, uh, or asks, and I'm, uh, you already touched on this, perhaps uh, we should reiterate for the attendees since the question did come in again. Uh, does Sweden have a national strategy for energy-related research and innovation, or how do you coordinate the different agencies and programs in order to cover the value chain? Yes, that is an important uh, question, and uh, the, the answer uh, has several components. Uh, in one way, uh, the majority of the really uh, primarily energy uh, relevant research is done by the uh, Swedish Energy Agency and they have an overall strategy uh, that they renew periodically and that they follow. Uh, so that uh, that strategy exists. Then there is also from the government and from, from parliament there are instructions that when the energy research or, or, or the energy agency touches upon areas of responsibility for other funding agencies uh, like uh, the Vinova that for instance funds uh, research on industrial processes and so on, uh, there is a, a coordination uh, and there is uh, discussions on, on synergies and overlaps and so on. And uh, this uh, is very important because if you look at the energy aspects of, of pulp and paper industry, for instance, or you might look at the pulp and paper industry and the quality of products they they produce and have research on that, and, and at some point these areas connect and you have to have uh, coordination and collaboration between the, the industrial product research and the uh, research on the energy aspects. So there is a history of coordination 
do you have anything to add? It's not easy. It, 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 it's a it, it's a very difficult task, but it's it's very necessary. Get the most out of the limited resources that we have, and and uh, avoid double work, or or perhaps more importantly, uh, avoid uh, things that escape from the radar and 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 are not addressed. So yes, there is one strategy for the energy agency and there is a system of, of coordination with the other funding agencies. Great, thank you. I think anyone that works in this field can agree that is always an issue and an important um, topic to tackle as well. Uh, moving along to the next question, uh, what role is regional integration with other Nordic and European countries expected to play in the post-2020 clean electricity goals? Well, there is uh, a Nordic uh, collaboration. There is a Nordic Council of Ministers. There, there is a Nordic Parliament. And there is a Nordic institution on energy research which also runs uh, a number of different uh, collaborative uh, efforts between the uh, five Nordic countries, Finland, uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark and Iceland. Uh, so uh, the, this focuses on the Nordic countries as a uh, region with the common visions and goals and uh, common uh, ways of doing things and uh, good channels for collaboration both between industry and, and researchers. So uh, we are looking at the Nordic system as, uh, as a unit also and looking at how this might uh, develop uh, in synergy with, uh, with the other Nordic countries and, and also how it might fit with the uh, greater European uh, energy system and um, that, is, uh, that is a very important aspect because uh, the different Nordic countries have different uh, areas of excellence, they have different resources uh, and so on and together uh, it's a much stronger region than the countries are individually. Um, I'm feeling I, I'm just uh, waffling a bit, uh, but uh, uh, the, the short answer to, to the question is that uh, the Nordic countries are in some way uh, a block, try some other and develop uh, solutions that benefit us all. Thank you, Lars. Uh, that uh, just to add, uh, if you are interested, there is, uh, there is a publication from jointly from the IEA and from the uh, Nordic Energy Research that is called Nordic Energy Technology Perspectives. This is a special part of, of the IEA series of Energy Technology Perspectives and this can be downloaded from, from the IEA website and this shows uh, some in some detail how one could see the future of uh, the Nordic countries as a region with uh, working towards net zero emissions. Great, thank you. And uh, perhaps this question's for Andreas. Uh, to, to promote the global growth of the clean tech companies, for example, matchmaking with potential investors, does the Swedish Energy Agency work with other Swedish government agencies such as, the, such as Business Sweden? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, we 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 work a lot with Business Sweden. Uh, I mean, they are out. They are posted all over the world. So I mean, they, it's quite natural to, to work with them. And um, we also work with some of the other agencies uh, around us in Sweden. For instance, uh, Lars mentioned Vinova. We also have the 
the Agency for Regional Growth and Development. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we, we need to, I mean, Sweden is a, such a small country, so we really need to, to get a uh, focus on our uh, yeah, agencies and, and get help from all of them. Uh, it's, it's really important, actually. Thank you, Andres. Uh, that is the last question we've received up to this point. Um, so with that, I just want to thank the panelists again for the, the Q&A session and the presentations. If any other questions uh, come in, we can always come back to them or we can send them to our panelists uh, after the webinar so that they can respond. Um, before I uh, wrap up the webinar, I'd just like to give the panelists uh, a final opportunity for any additional or closing remarks that you'd like to make. Uh, Lars, why don't we start with you and uh, your group. Well, the final remark is just if you have questions, suggestions or ideas for, for collaborations or, or initiatives within the Mission Innovation, just uh, drop us an email. Uh, to me or to Remy or to, to Andreas uh, and uh, I will be watching my mailbox and hoping for lots of, of, of suggestions. Great, thank you Lars. And so uh, with that on behalf of the Clean Energy Solutions Center I'd just like to again thank everyone in our attendees for taking the time to participate in today's webinar. We very much appreciate everyone's time and hope you, were, in return, uh, that you gathered some valuable insights um, that you can take back to your ministries, departments, and or organizations. Uh, we also invite you, uh, the attendees, to inform your colleagues and those in your networks about Solution Center resources and services, including the no-cost policy support through our Ask an Expert service. I also invite you to check the Solution Center website if you would like to view and download the slides from today's webinars. And also, uh, within about a week, we'll be posting a recording of the webinar uh, to the Solution Center uh, page. Additionally, you can find other information on upcoming webinars and training events on the Solution Center website. And just a reminder, we're now also posting webinar recordings to the Clean Energy Solution Center YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, I do encourage you to check that out. Uh, a lot of very useful and helpful uh, recordings out there, um, all in one spot for easy access to. Finally, I would like to kindly ask you to just take a moment after the conclusion of the webinar to complete the short survey that will automatically appear on your screen. Uh, your pre uh, feedback is very much appreciated. And so with that, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day, and we hope to see you again at future Clean Energy Solution Center events. And this concludes our webinar.